Blade Runner is a video game loosely inspired by the 1982 film Blade Runner, but actually based on the film soundtrack by Vangelis as the publishers were unable to obtain a license for a film tie-in. The game was published in 1985 by CRL Group PLC for Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum and Amstrad CPC. Reviews of the game were mostly negative. Development and release The game is, "...inspired by the Vangelis soundtrack", of the 1982 Blade Runner movie. The publisher was unable to obtain rights to the actual movie, so the game was instead said to be based on the soundtrack. The inlay stated that it was a, "...video game interpretation of the film score". Plot The plot of the game is similar to the associated movie. Repladroids sick for replicants, designed for use in space, have been banned from Earth following a revolt on a colony. The role of eliminating any repladroids found on Earth is given to a unit of bounty hunters. Gameplay The game features the player character hunting down replicants for bounty money. On loading the game, the player has to listen to around two minutes of music from the movie soundtrack without any ability to skip the sequence. Author Will Brooker notes that due to the computer's sonic limitations, the "'grandiose swoops and fanfares' of the soundtrack were reduced to a tinny one-channel burble." The game first presents the player with a map showing the locations of the fugitive replicants and the player's flying car, which must be steered over a droid on the map. At this point the game switches to a side-scrolling game in which the player must avoid crowds and cars whilst in pursuit of the replicant. As the levels increase, so does the level of the replicants. The first level replicants are slow and stupid, but the sixth level ones are faster than a human. Reception Sinclair user called the game pretentious and the graphics plotting. The reviewer disliked the lengthy repeating cut scenes, saying that they "...are well put together, but after you've seen them more than once you'll get an irresistible urge to smash up your spectrum." Your Sinclair thought that the game was lacking in variety and didn't feel like a finished product. Crash criticized the lack of graphical variety and thought that all the characters looked the same. The reviewer also criticized the sluggishness of the game's controls and that it was too much like a cut-down version of the hit 1984 game Ghostbusters. Reviewing the game on the Commodore 64, ZZAP, 64 panned the high difficulty level of the game and described the graphics as bland. Barry Atkins of the University of Wales's School of Film, Photography and Digital Media describes the game as lazily executed and unsatisfying, YOK -ing unoriginal gameplay mechanics to glancing visual references to the originating film. In his view, the game was merely an effort to cash in on the film's intellectual property, reducing all the subtleties, complexities and ambiguities of the film. To a game that players in the 1980s would have immediately recognized as a fairly mundane example of the shoot 'em up genre, where slogans such as move off world painted across a primary colored and flat game space gesture only vaguely to the film as the player adopts the role of a bounty hunter in a raincoat who bears a crude likeness to Deckard. <laughs> 